Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rio de Janeiro's Jeunesse Arena, the newest home to the 2017 mid-season Invitational. It's been seven months since SK Telecom T1 hoisted the Summoner's Cup at Worlds, and now the best teams from around the world are here to make their mark on the international stage. Inside the arena, all eyes are on which region will rise. We've got cosplayers galore. We've got Brazilian friends who are hyped and ready to go. We get to experience them firsthand for the first time because we've been hearing them through our headsets back in North America, but we've arrived at Rio. I've got three spectacular analysts on my desk. I'm James Dash Patterson alongside Indiana Frosker and Black. We got Chris, Papa Smithy Smith, and Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley. Gentlemen and lady, how are we doing today? Incredible, Rio, this is my first time here, my first MSI. I do have to say this though, I traveled all the way to the other side of the globe and I still couldn't get away from an Australian. Uh, what can I say, what can <laughs> I say? First time in South America for me as well. Yeah, well, The crowds here, they've got that reputation, they're gonna be loud. If it makes you feel any better, the Australians have gotten everywhere. We've got pastry time in NA too, so don't worry, we've got our fill. Oh, now nice. the squads we'll see on stage aren't the only international teams in the house. You're getting a look at our partners here from Brazil, CB Law, who are helping to bring the competition to the far corners of the globe as well as our Chinese LPL broadcasting team. Now as you can see things are getting heated up as we count down to the opening ceremony here at MSI 2017. And as the world's best face off on the riff we want to hear from you. Tweet us at LOL Esports and use the hashtag MSI 2017 but let us know what regional clash you're looking forward to the most and why. Don't forget to include that hashtag so we can check on the conversation later today. Now for a little bit of business, the format and the schedule coming into MSI 2017. The final weeks of MSI 2017 will be made up of two stages. First, a best of one double round robin between all six teams. Now the top four teams from the group stage will advance to next week's knockout stage, a best of five single elimination bracket that will decide our champion. As with last year, the four teams that advance to the bracket stage will secure a first pool seed at World, so advancing in this tournament, all that much more important. And it's also important to note that the first salvo was actually fired by the GPL, by the Gigabyte Marines who went through and qualified uh, the GPL for a spot at Worlds already because of their performance at the play-in, because they've made it here to MSI. So an extra spot in the play-ins, a spot already into the group stages of Worlds is a big achievement by the Gigabyte Marines. And the question is, can they do one better? Can they get that pool one seed a lot? That'll be a story. Up. Yeah, that will be a story. Now, of course, the competition gets underway today with six games, beginning with a trial by fire for Europe's G2 Esports as they face three-time world champions, SK Telecom T1. Then it's the LPL's Team WE versus the LMS's Flash Wolves, and we'll get our first look at the two remaining contenders as the GPL's Gigabyte Marines face off against North America's TSM, and that's a rematch, Giselle. Yeah, and it's going to be a, a lot more intense than you may be expecting. If you didn't watch the play-ins, Gigabyte Marines took TSM to five games and almost... Winning the first two. Yeah, yeah, they were dominating. It was almost a 3-0 sweep. TSM able to edge out that reverse sweep to qualify here for the group stage. And with a lot on the line coming into these days, Riot's raising the stakes, and so can you. Through May 24th, you can pick up Conqueror Karma and accompanying Ward Skin in client, and 25% of all proceeds will go directly to the midseason invitational prize pool. Now, the teams here today represent the best from their home regions, and when we look at the numbers, it's not by a narrow margin, to say the least. We have to talk about the heavy favorites here in Rio, reigning world champions SK Telecom T1. My question to you three, is there anyone that can take them down? Uh, to be blunt, I, I gotta say no. They have the best players, the best coach, the most experienced, they're the reigning champions, and to top it all off, they're even better than last year. I mean, seven years into the competitive scene, and finally, it doesn't take a Korean analyst to hype <laughs> up the Korean region. Everyone knows they come in heavy favorites, but there is still some caveats. Will they rise as champions at the end? Probably. I'm willing to make that bet. I think most of us would. But historically, the first week of MSI, the first week of any tournament is where they're weakest. This is a team that adapts to patches, that really over time figures out what's best. But a lot of us are shrouded in darkness. This team has only played three games in the last three, four weeks. They only played three games on 7.6 onwards. We're jumping ahead in patches and maybe SKT. G2, it's probably a good time to be playing them. But just to echo a bit of what uh, Zale was saying on the side, the scary thing is, is you have two new members right now. You got Huni, you got Peanut, you know, former Rocks Tiger there in the jungle. We had to bring in the North American and the European import to kind of boost SKT. And a talent. Exactly. <laughs> but the scary thing is, is that Huni is definitely a front runner for best top laner at the tournament. Yep. And with more of the fighter champions coming into meta, like the Rumbles, the Fizzes, I think he's just the best well-rounded top laner at the tournament. He can play the tank now, he's matured to that, and we know that he can pull out those carry champions. And while most people consider SK Telecom to be the tournament favorite, the team that people are looking at to perhaps unseat them would be the Flash Wolves. Of course, this is a team that in the past we've referred to as a dark horse. Papa Smithy, I know you got some thoughts on that one. I mean, they've always been a bit shrouded and dark. 
There's no English broadcast for the LMS. You see them come into international tournaments. Everybody's like, okay, these guys are pretty good, but they've been so dominant in their region. Nobody really knows what to make of them. I think their recent performances at IEM on the global stage with their roster changes, finally, they're going away from Dark Horse and becoming real contenders. It feels like the consensus among most is that they're the biggest contender next to SK Telecom, which is a big compliment and shows finally some confidence in the Flash Wars on the global stage. And here's the thing, they're no longer just the Maple and Carsa show. They've upgraded their bot lane, their AD carry, formerly known as Double Red, now known as Betty, is a massive upgrade over NL. These guys are strong across the board. Now, of course, they did have kind of a lackluster performance in Worlds the last time we saw them at a major international play in terms of Riot tournaments. So looking for a little bit of redemption from that. But if we move ahead to our next team here, we're going to have to talk about G2 Esports. This is the true story of redemption here at MSI. Most people will recall last year, you know, the whole all the memes around G2 vacation and whatnot before this squad with some members swapped around, going to be looking to kind of achieve and move that organization to a higher level of standing. And, and this, is, this is a team with an incredible amount of, of pressure on them because although they have been regionally dominant, they don't have really the support of the European fans. You look at them in playoffs, people are cheering for Fnatic to beat them, then they're cheering for UOL to beat them, and they're known as these international chokers. If they could finally show up and prove themselves here, they may be able to win over some of those fans. I mean, frankly for me, G2 are coming in as kind of the dark horse. I like the language. Like, yes, Flash Wolves are the contender, but if you look at this really thick mid-pack of the TSM, the Team WE, G2, and uh, Gigabyte Marines, I think G2 are just slightly a cut above. They were much more dominant, you know, a lot more 2-0s in the region than TSM, you know, dropping all those one games. Yep, yep. And EU holistically as a region has such a smorgasbord of, like, these different types of metas. You've got teams that play fast, teams that play slow, all these weird pocket picks. And so G2 have been able to adapt to everything that's been thrown to them. And coming into MSI, that's a great skill to have. And while G2 look for redemption, a team that does not need to look for redemption would be the GPL's Gigabyte Marines. These guys have impressed from the start to, to where we are right now in the tournament. I mean, they were, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were uh, underhyped, right? They oh. were they were discounted at the, at the outset of the play-ins, and yet there they are qualifying here for groups and grabbing that slot at Worlds for their region. Yeah, I mean, people were, most player, people were expecting Turkey to come through, super massive to be able to win that qualifier, but it was the Gigabyte Marines, and I think a lot of it had to do with they play their own style, they were not intimidated by the competition, whether it was TSM or super massive, no matter who they played, they stayed aggressive, and I, I think there's something to be said for that. Yeah, exciting stylistically, they play like the nameplates are off. They play aggressive. They're a great team to watch. So they're, they're a team that's definitely there to be followed. Now, the flip side of that whole story is TSM and the fact that they even got pushed to a fifth game by the Gigabyte Marines yet to get to this stage of the tournament. Talk to me, Azale, about this squad and, and maybe some of the reservations they might have coming into day one here. I mean, they have a lot to prove. Not only is, is this going to be a pretty tough matchup for them based on the play and results, but, you know, they're a team that's coming off of international failure as well. Coming out of the summer split, they were one of the most hyped teams going into Worlds 2016. They failed there, and these players are back and looking for some redemption. All right, well, our final team is going to be the LPL team, Team WE. So, Frosker, I'm going to hand this one off to you. Take it away. Okay, so Chinese aggression, just kill it. Just get it out of your vocabulary. Team WE, if you haven't seen them, they play like a completely different team. That's not to say that they can't go off in the early game, that they can't play aggressive and fast tempo games. It's just much more controlled and much more methodical. They're more of a marathon than a sprinter. Well, and of course, if we talk about legacy with this team, it's all about rebuilding that legacy for this squad, right? As we remember, I may qualifying over, over rather, Team WE for that third spot here at Worlds 2016. So a little bit of a rebuilding for legacy for them. Yeah, definitely hurts me to remember that game. Oh. They just barely missed out on Worlds. If you haven't seen it, it was the Hail Mary of best of fives to uh, knock WE out of world contention. And this is a team that has been on an upward trend for quite some time. You know, a couple years back, they were 10th place in LPL. They go to an IEM, they bring in Mystic, they bring in Chie and some of these players. The two-year rebuild, really. Yeah, and, and over those two years, you know, they get to the finals there, they lose. Last year, barely missing out on Worlds. Now they are the number one seed in, for, from China in MSI, and they're finally here. Uh, Froster, and talk to me about the individuals on this squad, because I think we look at a lot of the other orgs and we go, there's a star player there. Who's the star here for Team WE? You have to pay attention to Condi. He's the jungler. He's by no means the uh, the second place jungler. He's definitively the best, and everything plugs into him. All right, that's great to hear. That's going to do it for us here for a moment at the desk. We'll take a closer look at the competition in just a little bit, but it's time now to meet our contenders here at the 2017 League of Legends Midseason Invitational.
National League of Legends has come to Florida in the first ever mid-season Invitational. Faker has never lost with LeBlanc. EDG takes down Faker of SK Telecom T1 or wiped LPL's Edward Gaming are the 2015 mid-season Invitational champions. 欢迎各位观众朋友收看 2016 dos estúdios da Riot Games Brasil em São Paulo I don't feel pressured at all. No matter what I do, it's gonna be better than last time. This is against Jitu Da. I think they will definitely be better than last time. It's our time to redeem ourselves. It's it's our time to show the world that we can be up there with the very best. The one I want to do is to get them. I want to get them to go to the first to get them to go. They're gonna be looking for revenge, and we're gonna be looking for redemption. 已经很多年没有代表中国出去参加比赛了，感觉挺有压力的吧？我也是代表一个赛区来打的。还有，世界一流球迷，我也会去看球的。今天的 MSI 目标是夺得第五胜。这是我们第二次来参加 MSI， 然后这次的目标当然是希望能够拿下冠军
저희가 작년에는 처음에 좀 많이 져서 이번에는 좀 처음에도 잘할 수 있게 준비를 하고 있고요. The 2015 Huni was like quite baby Huni, but I'm in SKT right now, so I'm ready to smash everyone. An amazing performance here to open the tournament. Some of those drummers join us from Banda Alana, which started as an after-school program focused on teaching students as young as 11 to play music. They're here with us at MSI. We're just game one is minutes away. And gentlemen, just in there, we heard Faker talking about how last year they had that slow start. You pinpointed it here at the top of the day, Papa Smithy. But according to Faker, they're doing everything in their power to make sure that doesn't repeat itself. So we might even have a smaller window than we thought for other teams to unseat SKT. But let's take a step back on Faker. Because remember, what, three weeks ago, he's in the bunch where Terry's in that big MVP chair over in Korea, in Seoul, for the OGN Grand Final. And now we see him in the Jeunesse Arena, lit, lit up, holding the MSI trophy. Three world championships in a row, if you include MSI, that run since 2015 Worlds. It's been a couple of interesting weeks. Flying V and everything. Oh. So, man, did they look intimidating up there. But it does really set the stage for what the rest of these teams are going to have to put forward in order to overcome SK Telecom as the tournament favorite. Other things I want to talk about here, though, are your guys' expectations or what excites you about this tournament. We've done the business. We've set the table for the teams. What are you excited to see? I mean, it was me sitting here with you on the first day of Worlds talking about the Ezreals, the 80 carry roll being the one that was exciting at Worlds. It's the jungle mids here. It feels like everyone's trying to separate. Is it the mid laners? Is it the jungles? No, it's the duos here because Maple Carcer are from the Flash Wolves, Peanut and Faker from SKT. There's a lot to love with the mid lane jungle synergy. And that's really the easy one to go to. And yes, it's explosive across the board. But what's interesting to me is when you start breaking out that 2v2 and you start matching it across, that things really become lopsided. Like Carcer versus Maple uh, versus, or Car. Maple Carsa versus Peanut Faker, that sounds amazing. Hype. But Peanut Huni versus Carsa MMD, suddenly that's much more lopsided towards mm. SKT. And I think it's these side lanes that are really going to play the fundamental difference here in making or breaking these teams. Absolutely. Uh, I, I've got to say, I'm most excited to see who's going to adapt to the new patch. Who's going to bring out you know, the pocket pick or something special that really can change the course of the game? So we looked at MSI last year, you know, CLG really popularizing range supports, even Sona and things like this coming out. I want to see who's going to be the new trendsetter. Just to jump in here, it's important to note that all of MSI will be played on patch 7.8 with the new bot lane duo of Zion Rakan disabled. Galio, however, very much enabled, and he saw lots of play in the play-ins. He didn't just see it in the plans, he also saw it all throughout LPL playoffs as well as the finals, but a lot more success here in the plans, particularly by Fab Fabulous up into that top lane. But of course, he's always a flex pick. Yeah, he is, but I'm going to say I'm not really a Galio fan. And speaking of the LPL, he did not do so hot in most of those games. You know, something like 1 in 5, maybe 2 in 5. To and, be fair, and he was played by relegation teams. <laughs> I mean, he was also played in the finals mid lane where he lost. And I, I think, to me, the thing, the thing with Galio is he's so predictable. Everything he does is so obvious, so telegraphed. It's, you know, char the channel on his, on his ultimate, the channel on his taunt, the wind up on his punch. I think that you can play around it very well at the highest levels. And... I think uh, while he has some good combos, you know, like J4 and Ari, uh, he's not the most impressive pick. Let's explore those, because perhaps he's not universal, but we did see him played to much more success in the play-ins, and that was typically paired with things like the Ari. So as opposed to it being more of a reactive and defensive, you know, tool, it was more of an aggressive enabling tool. And it's a flex pick. It's something that Frost Curran just brought up. And the power of flex picks at international events, it feels like, once again, they will be under the microscope for a while. Is it going to dominate the mid lane? Probably not. Dominate the top lane? Probably not. It can always push. And something that's flexible that can be taken early in the draft and flex, hide other picks, I think always has inherent power. We talk about Galio as one possible flex pick. Another, and I know a lot of us are very excited about this, the possibility of a Lucian showing up perhaps in the mid lane. Let's talk about other flexes that are available to these teams, including Lucian. Uh, the Karma as well is going to be a big one. It feels like the Cogmore, the Twitch, the Hyper Carries in the bot lane are back. And that means that Karma support and also Lulu, uh, Lulu in the mid lane. So the flex nature there, it's going to be a big thing. And, and although Lucia Top is, is basically a meme with Huni, it, it's something that I think there is a real chance of them bringing it out. Huni I mean, has Faker, been playing in solo queue. Yeah, Huni's been playing in solo queue, but it's not just him. Faker had you know, over 30 games of this in solo queue ranked mid. So he's, he's actually practicing it a lot. And, 
And if you can play that well in three rolls, it can be a pretty powerful flex pick perhaps for SKT. I always found it hilarious though. As you look at Faker, you see all the Lucian. You look at like CA, you see more Lucian. You can see it like bleeding <laughs> through. But yep. then you check in on some mid laners and it's like they get two losses and they suddenly stop <laughs> playing. <laughs> I don't understand why this is a thing. Anyway, it's not just about what we think. It's about uh, what you think as well. So please represent your region in client throughout the tournament, both for Pride and the prize on the line. The region with the highest percentage of players sporting their MSI icon will earn themselves a three-day IP boost. Those icons are available right now, so let your team's flag fly. That's going to do it for us here. At